so you've just exported your video in DaVinci Resolve, but it looks a bit different. It's lost some contrast and some saturation. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to correct this tone shift. Now, this problem occurs a lot to Mac users in particular, and this video is just gonna be a little version of a previous video that I went in depth a couple of months ago. So creators, here I am in DaVinci Resolve, and I have this little project, and it has two types of files. These ones are shot in a flat picture profile, in a log format so they need some correction they need more contrast more saturation and then over here have these clips which don't need any contrast or saturation they look perfect just as they are so to correct this tone shift what we need to do is go into our project settings we can access it by going into this little gear in the bottom right corner and over here we're going to go into color management which is a tool which will allow us to control the colors on our timeline and the colors that we're going to have when we're exporting our video over here in color science, we're going to select YRGB color managed. And then over here, we're going to deactivate or de-click the automatic color management to have more options. In color processing mode, we're going to go all the way down to custom. So we have even more options. And right here, it could be a bit overwhelming, but don't worry, we're not going to move all of these. Now, the values that I'm going to introduce here are going to be useful for the large majority of you guys. Whether it be that you're exporting your video to be uploaded into social media, exporting for a client, or to be reproduced in common devices like smartphones, TVs, or computers, most of these devices work with similar types of colors. In other words, a similar color space, which is Rec. 709 and its variations. So I'm not going to dive into color spaces because it's a whole nother topic, but just so you know where I'm coming from. If you're exporting your video for a specific color space, which is in Rec. 709, put it down in the comment section and I'll help you out. So three settings that we're going to move right here are input color space, timeline color space, and also output color space. Now for the time being, let's ignore input color space and let's concentrate in the last two. Timeline color space will determine the management of colors when you're color grading or you're editing within DaVinci Resolve. So the colors that you're gonna look at when you're editing. Then output color space will determine how DaVinci Resolve manages the colors when you're exporting your final video. So this is very important guys. You need to make sure that the values that you select in timeline color space are gonna be the same that you select in output color space. So there's a continuity in the way DaVinci Resolve is managing the color space. Now, which color space you may ask? Right here, if you're on Mac, of course, this video is created for Mac users. You can select Rex 9 a So Rex 9 a you can select in timeline and also in output. Why specifically Rex 709, you may ask, when there's so many Rex 709s? Because this one is created specifically for Mac. Why? Because the GPU of Mac renders the colors in a slightly different manner, creating the shift in terms of contrast and saturation. So pay attention right here when we have our value set in. Pay attention to the clip at the background when we save our settings. Notice that there's a slight shift in terms of contrast and saturation. And this is the exact shift in terms of contrast and saturation that we previously had when we exported our file, only that now it's happening before inside the program. So now we're gonna go ahead and color grade and export our video. And there's not gonna be a difference between our final result and the one we have on the program. So let's go ahead and export our video over here. Go into the deliver over here. I'm gonna export this small segment and render. And once the video has been complete, we can open it up. Here we have it in QuickTime. Command F to make it full screen. And then I'm gonna do the same in DaVinci Resolve. Command F to make it full screen. I'm just gonna switch between the two to see if there's any difference. And there's no difference at all in terms of contrast and saturation. This is basically how we correct this error. And voila, just like that, we've corrected the tone shift that occurs when exporting your videos on Mac. Now, one other thing that I have to keep in mind or that I highly recommend is go in DaVinci Resolve into our preferences over here and go into the general tab over here and select automatically tag Rex and Ryan clips as Rex and Ryan A, just to make sure that DaVinci Resolve comprehends that you're treating all your Rex and Ryan clips as Rex and A. So this is just a precaution, just select it and select save. Okay, so the previous example was for any clip that doesn't need any real conversion or color correction, maybe shot from your phone or from your drone. Well, what happens if maybe your clips on your timeline are shot in a log format like this one? What we need to do is go again into our corrections over here and in input color space, you're gonna select the corresponding log format. In my case, this clip was shot in S-Log3 in the color mode is gamut 3cine So that's exactly what I'm going to select in input color space. You guys, maybe if you shot in Panasonic, V-Log, you can find it over here, Nikon N-Log, Leica, C-Log from Canon, all of them are over here. So what I'm going to do is select the corresponding log format, 
So what I'm telling DaVinci Resolve right here is that my clips are in S-Log3 and I want them to be converted into Rex 9A when I'm working with them in the program and then to convert them into Rex 9A as well when I export them. So pay attention to the clip in the background when I select save. You can see that my clip has now been converted into Rex 9A. So now we can go ahead, edit, export and all my clips in my timeline are going to be converted as you can see all the ones that were shot in S-Log3 are basically now in Rex 9A. Now in this project I have a little bit of an issue because I have clips from different cameras and right here these ones are being converted as S-Log3 but then the same conversion is being applied into my drone clips that don't need any S-Log3 conversion. So this looks terrible but this is very easy to correct guys. I'm going to go into my color and then I have over here my reels or my clip carousel. If you don't see it, go up here and select it. And I'm going to select the clips that I don't want to be affected by the conversion. And I'm going to right click, input color space. And I'm going to select same as timeline. In other words, Rec 709, which is the value that we introduced in color management. So we select it. And now our clip is being treated as Rec 709 and not as S-Log3. So now we can go ahead once again, color grade, export, and there's not going to be any tone shift. So there you have it, guys. Solved how to correct the tone shift and contrast shift that occurs on Mac when you're exporting your video. Now, Magella right here is asking me about another tone shift that happens when she uploads her exported video into her iPhone. So this is something that we need to learn to accept and uh, that different screens have different quality, different capacity and different type of calibration. It would be too much to ask that the colors that I'm looking at on my studio display are going to be the same that are going to be rendered in this cheap Samsung that I have over here. Just imagine the frustration of the colorist of a big blockbuster movie, for example, Dune. That colorist probably spent days, if not weeks, nailing down the oranges for the sand or for them to be rendered completely different in the devices that were watching that movie. So he's probably turning in his bed of frustration because all his hard work looked completely different on screen. So just something to keep in mind. I hope this video was useful. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you and I'll see you in the next one.